Hey, Buzzheads, welcome to the 70s Buzz Podcast. I'm Curtis Tucker. And I'm Todd Wheeler, bringing you our memories, or lack thereof, of growing up in the 70s. We are not a history podcast. We just want you guys to know that. Sometimes we get things wrong, and if you listen yep. to us long enough, you're going to be screaming at your just, device trying to give us the right 12 answers. 12 seconds. Oh. Listen up as we recount growing up Hi, in the Midwest this and our unique uh, experience. Wave. Go to 70sbuzz.com. Oh, that was folks, just for and leave us your thoughts. Kind of way, yeah. Let us know if you guys have any show ideas. The if you'd yeah. like us to uh, get you on as an advertiser, <laughs> and don't forget, please leave us reviews on your favorite podcasting apps. I'm ready. Are you? Are you ready? I should suppose. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Oh, what was that song you was playing on the guitar? Oh, I don't. I was just messing around. <laughs> oh, I like. I tried. I, I tried to recognize it. I was too, and I. <laughs> I thought that kind of sounds familiar, but I don't know what it was. How can we do do riding the storm out? Or because I haven't played in very long. And we are Rosinante. <laughs> we are. <laughs> Some of those I don't even remember the chords. Yeah, mm. we'd have to stay any five moments. What's up, everybody? What's going on, Buzzheads? Welcome back to another epi. Episode, episode of the 70s, 70s Buzz, Buzz podcast. podcast. And welcome to you YouTubers, because I guarantee you, <laughs> we're getting this on YouTube this week. By golly. I poly- we, we apologize. We thought we would get last week's episode, and we got copyrighted right out of YouTube. YouTube has no sense of humor at oh, all. Oh, no. They, they, so that, that uh, yeah, they wouldn't let me even uh, turn that one on, so... We're going to put this one on YouTube. So if yeah. you wonder what a uh, typical episode looks like while it's being recorded in our studio, and you better you better look now because we'll be changing studios <clears throat> soon. 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 <laughs> yeah, so, a couple anyway, months. Yeah. So check that out. But anyway, we are back. Have we figured for, out where we're going? Uh, are we going to your office? Probably my place, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So... Um, we are back for another happy, exciting episode and uh, we hope everybody's doing well out there. Hopefully, we'll get past all this corona, coronavirus stuff. But, that and the oil crisis. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Um, if you guys are living in, like, Medford, Oregon, or um, South Carolina, I don't know about South Carolina, but some of these other places, mm-hmm. uh, Oklahoma is way dependent on oil. And if oil, we, we survive really good when oil's at $30 a barrel. I mean, we're doing pretty good. And that's and with uh, the, that's with the, uh, um, when they drill the, the new drilling, the oil. shale, oh. shale, uh, because with the shale, shale, we've gotten it down to $30 a barrel. It used to have, we used to have to be like 50, 50. yeah, or more, but when it goes to minus $40 a barrel, is that what it got down to? Yesterday, yeah. Oh. It, it ended the day at forty dollars minus forty. Holy shit. Yeah. So they they basically had to pay people forty dollars to not to not deliver the oil. They were like, uh, we just we don't want it. Here's forty bucks. Don't bring it. <laughs> well, forty bucks isn't bad. For every barrel though. Yeah, anyway, yeah. Oh. So um Is that like forty dollars a tanker or no, probably not. No, that's a, just a barrel. Yeah. One barrel. Um, hey, what? Some shout outs real quick. Ah! There you go. <clears throat> shout it out. Shout out. You guys, thanks for sending the email. Buzz at buzzheadmedia.com. Uh, Dave, thanks for leaving messages at 580-541-3805. Everybody else, thanks for all of the comments on Facebook and stuff like that. And and Dave, I did Google Harry, Dave, Harry and David Baskets. It's pretty cool. I, I'm going to order... So I got somebody I'm gonna send a basket to. Oh, yeah! I gotta tell you something later. Oh, yeah! Oh, <laughs> we got scoop. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just remind me. I'll tell you later. So who else? Uh, who else are we shouting out uh, over there? Dave Robinson. Dave. Uh, Leo Lashak. Leo. That's a cool name. Yeah. Leo. What's your name? Leo. It, it kind of sounds like Leo a hockey. Shock. Sounds like a hockey player. No nah, man, it sounds like a Lashak. Uh, Lashak. I don't know. It's cool. Anyway, Leo shouted out uh, Mike Norris. Shout it out. He uh, commented on the duo and duets. Yeah. He's from South Carolina. We appreciate you guys with all the shout outs, comments, suggestions. And and usually when we do an episode, we ask you guys a question. And so we really enjoy it when you guys actually answer. Respond. Respond. Uh, so continue to leave us comments and reviews and subscribe. Tell your friends to subscribe. Whether they're going to listen to us or not, it just helps us in the 
it no. hasn't helped us yet because we haven't <laughs> popped anywhere. But oh, and then there was the one guy that did leave us a comment. Uh oh, well, that's the one I forgot. Well, oh heck, and I can't remember his name. What did he say on iTunes? He oh he left us a comment. He only gave us a three star rating. Which what? What? We're not gonna. How many are available? Five. What? We're not. He gave us a three star rating, and he said. <sighs> 70s doesn't have an apostrophe. <laughs> and he's, and then I think I think in his in the title of his of his of his comment was I had to do it. So anyway. And just just so you know, I and I apologize for not having your name in front of me. Um, I knew that. But in the United States of America, we do put apostrophes in front of the S. In front of the F's on 70s and 80s, even though it, you're not supposed to, but it's just, I went with what the, what it, you know. The, 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 the masses. The, the, yeah, yeah, so anyway. Yeah, I never thought about that, you, but yeah, he's, exactly, he's, he's absolutely right. Yeah, yeah. It's not plural. But also. we're not grammatically correct by any means oh, on We're hardly show. correct on anything around so, here. So, yeah, so Eesh, anyway. Eesh, but, uh, but I appreciate you taking the time. Exactly. To leave the comment in yeah. the review, so. So, had he listened to the, any episodes, or is he just scrolling by and saw? I'm, I'm hoping he. I'm hoping he listened to. It. He surely he listened to an episode. Yeah, you have to get that dude's name. We'll call him up or something. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll find him. We'll We're, we'll track him down. Yeah, we'll put him on air. We'll make him famous, yeah. quasi famous, sort of famous. Yeah. So so tonight's episode, <clears throat> we're kind of wanting to bring everything back up, lift everybody up. Let's be oh. happy. The the reason. That we do the show, and the reason that you guys listen to the show is because we all love the 70s. That's right. And so uh, we did our 100th episode, and it was kind of titled, it was supposed to be titled, The 100 Best Memories We Have of the 70s. Well, we didn't even get through 50 of yeah. our best memories. So That was 25 episodes ago, by the way. I know, I know. <laughs> so, so this is kind of a continuation of that. This is just more stuff that we loved um, events and just memories and just little things, big things that uh, we remember from the 70s and why we loved them so much. And why, Mr. Wheeler, as your pen bends? I got, I got a wobbly pen. Remember doing that back in the 70s? It was Yuri Geller and his spoon. Um, why? 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 Why, do, why? Why, why do we have such good memories of the 70s? Well, because it was the greatest decade on to man! And if you guys want to see that on film, go to YouTube, Curtis Tucker TV, and you can see that. I'll almost guarantee it'll be on there. <clears throat> almost. Almost. <laughs> almost. 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 Well. Okay, so I've got all kinds of random stuff. You've got stuff kind of by uh, year. Yeah, over I went there. by year because I started thinking about. Oh, I remember that. And then, then, and then I always go, "What year was that?" I always do that. Like, "What year was that?" Yeah. So, so I was thinking I was in the seventies. I was basically eight to eighteen. Mm-hmm. So you were kind of what? I was seven to. 17. Basically, yeah. yeah. So that's... Well, uh, you were you turned 18 in December. December, yeah. So you were more 717 than 818. Yeah. I mean, by a, by a wide margin. Your birthday is December 17th. 20. 20th. March 17th, that's right. I always get you to... See, even less. See. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, yeah. So anyway, so we have... Uh, yeah, so... Memories when and I and the memories are a lot different. I mean, the memories from pre seventy five are kind of you know, more more elementary young kid mm -hmm. stuff, and mm -hmm. then post seventy five is more as we got into junior high and high school. High school. High school. What high year school. did we go to Waller? Uh, oh, to Waller. Um, well, if we went to high school in seventy nine, seventy eight, seventy seven, seventy six. Mm, okay. Well, no, it had been fall of seventy five. Mm. No. Yeah, fall of 75 and then spring of 76 to get out. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So right there, right there, smack dab in the middle. Somewhere in the, I don't know, somewhere in the yeah. middle. Things started changing about that time. Yes, they did. Oh, remind me to tell you something else. I'm going to write it down. Oh, he, he got to remind me of two things. Yeah. And I'm going to, as soon as he tells me, uh -huh. I'm going to go on to my Twitter account and I will tell you guys. <laughs> so follow me, go to twitter.com slash Enid Buzz uh, and you'll get... All of the scoop there. Yeah, it's weird because uh, lately we haven't been uh, communicating near as much as we used to do. Oh yeah, basically we come in and do this, and that's about it. Yeah, um, I don't really know why. Just busy. I mean, well, busy, and we, you can't go have a beer anywhere. You yeah. can't really. Yeah, yeah. 
Because we were ha- we'd have lunch quite oh, a lunch, bit. Oh, lunch. That's why. Yeah, we don't yeah. do lunch anymore. Yeah, we don't do lunch or dinner anymore. So. No. Well, shit. Yeah. Anyway. Okay, so. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, well, just hop into it. Oh. Okay, so I broke mine down basically by the year. And you look, YouTubers. See, I write mine on paper. Curtis puts his on one of them things. And if his battery ever died, he'd be crap out of luck. No, because I have that device, and I have that device, and the thing is, they all sync together, so I cannot lose my notes. Uh, yeah, whatever. I have all my, look at Look at all these notes. These are from the last few weeks. I, anyway, uh, so I went, okay, what happened in 1970? Now, I distinctly remember January 1st, 1970. Yeah, yeah, I remember you telling me that. Uh, because, and it was a nice day. It was, you know, it wasn't, a, wasn't cold, it was, even though it was 1st of January. I remember sitting on the hood of my parents' car. It was a 67 Impala, brown four-door. It was a further. Uh, I remember sitting on the hood of the car thinking, wow, it's it's a whole new day. It's not the 60s anymore. I'm like, man, it's the 70s. Um, and I do, it, you know, so that was one of my big memories of the 70s. And the other one was, um, it was around that time when uh, one of my brother's good friends came home or came over and it was the middle of the night either that or super early in the morning it's probably super early in the morning uh, and uh woke us up to tell us goodbye because he was going to vietnam he was all in his army get up and i i remember waking up because my, my brother and i shared a room back then and uh i remember thinking, why is that guy he dressed up like a soldier and then later i found out it was one of his buddies came telling bye i don't remember who it was and i'm hoping he got home okay so yeah we'll just pretend he did yeah 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 uh, yeah. That, so that was my 1970 memory, or one of my early 70s memories. One of my early, I mean, it's just it's just weird because of this, the whole virus thing. It's just, I don't know why. It just seems like just driving around and doing simple things right now just remind me, it, just the sun on my face mm-hmm. and smelling grass. Mm-hmm. It, it, I'll be like, oh, I remember <laughs> having to mow the grass in the 70s, you know, because so, so, you know, raised by a single mom and had a sister. So they did laundry and dishes and I always had to do the lawn. Well, my mom, for some weird reason, bought us an electric lawnmower. Man, you had that thing down in art. Not, not a battery powered one. <laughs> an electric, electric one. And you talk about some extension cords <laughs> and the house that we lived in in the late 70s was a had a long on grant side yard yeah. and it took it took a couple of extension cords <laughs> to get that sucker out there so i remember you flip it so the handle would yeah flip the, and the and ha- yeah the handle would flip so you could go either way that way you didn't have to like turn around on the the extension cord. how many people got shocked with that i mean how many people uh, i must have run over that extension cord and chopped it in two 20 times because it had duct tape and electrician's tape all over it so so what you did you wouldn't do a circle you would go back and forth. oh yeah you had to go back and forth now did you start start cutting and then work your way away or did you know i think i experimented sometimes i'd do it one way and sometimes the other because i remember you have like you'd have to flip the cord yeah sometime. i think i think i started far away and worked my way back yeah but that then the cord got in the way well, I always remember winding it and, and doing what you're saying, whipping yeah. it out of the way. Yeah, yeah it was – anyway, but uh, for, just the smell of grass and the the heat and the sun on my face just reminds me. Um, and then driving down the street this week with it being hot, but not hot enough to turn on the air conditioner, sticking your – you know, my head out the window, just remembering – for some reason in the 70s, it didn't seem like my mom ever ran the air conditioner in the car – very much so we really were, well she smoked and that was probably why she didn't she at least back then had enough foresight to not completely trap us in the vehicle with her smoke <laughs> in the summer so the windows were rolled down usually because she she smoked like a chimney i yeah. mean never not she was never not smoking yeah and and so and that's on my list too but um just the fact of oh, driving yeah. in a car with the the wind in your face but then yeah and then that alludes to the smell of cigarettes oh god even though i hate cigarettes and i hate cigarette smell it does evoke memories. Every now and then, yeah, I'll get a, sm- a smell of a cigarette, and it'll be and it'll be kind of like, oh yeah, I kind of remember being stuck in my mom's car with oh yeah sixty seven Thunderbird. She still has it in the garage. It is a garage find because it's just sitting there. Nobody's driving it. <laughs> Nobody's driven it in decades. It's a long. It's been sitting in there a long time. Yeah, that'll be a chore to get that thing out. Yeah, I remember my parents smoking in the car, and. I would be like, please roll down the window, crack it, or they'd crack a little bit, but not enough. It was never enough, you know. I'm surprised, 
you know, I wouldn't be surprised if we don't get cancer from secondhand smoke. Oh yeah, later in life. Oh yeah, because you know we never smoked. I tried for about a month. I couldn't do it. Yeah, my kids made fun of me. <laughs> yeah, I never like you know. I never. I mean, I you know, I've smoked a cigarette for grins, you know, to yeah. be stupid, but yeah. I just I don't can't, like cigars. I was gonna say I can't even. I, I've I've tried cigar. I mean, I even did. I, there was one summer I dipped. Yeah, yeah, me which too. was in the. I guess it was that was in the eighties. It was early eighties, yeah, but you, you were in college, I think. I was, and then I, I farmed that summer, so I was oh. on a tractor, and I was around all the rednecks and everybody was you know so i dipped that whole summer but i i never got addicted and thought it was awful the whole time i did it so. yeah and we can say redneck and we don't get in trouble well i think i have a redneck yeah, i did toot you from today because i was i was gonna say, yeah my my window in my office the sun right now is beats down for about two hours on the back of my neck every day mm-hmm. and rather than covering up the window i just i like the heat so yeah. i just deal with it yeah i had my my back to the sun Chopping 100, or actually it's 96, 28 inch half inch rebars. Ooh. Yeah, but they look really cool where they're going. You'll see. Working in a remodeling a steakhouse. So, yeah. anyway. We'll have to post that picture somewhere. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. So, anyway, and then speaking of grass, uh, I remember distinctly too, uh, you know, when we lived in the Waverly and uh, Kisner edition over there. You'd go across basically where Boggy Creek is. Mm-hmm. You'd cross Garriott, and there was that field where Wendy's ended up. So before Wendy's, that was just a field, and mm-hmm. we played it. We just we spent a lot of time in that field because it was it wasn't grass, but it had these weird weeds that would grow up, and it, it was they were like probably waist high, so you could like hide. <laughs> you know, if you went in the field, you could hide and do mm-hmm. kids, you know, kids weird kid stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we'd go in there a lot and just lay there and look up at the sky. And I remember. You know, basically the sun beating down on you and just, and, you know, doing the whole cloud thing. Yeah, that reminded me. I totally forgot. On, on my street, there was, uh, we lived in, I lived on a dead end road, and to- ne- directly across the street was nothing but trees. And we called it the woods. And um, my family, the next door neighbor family, the people next to them uh, had a daughter, and it was one of those streets where, there was a bunch of kids all about the same age, and we all played together. We all had neighbor gates. And, the, you know, if, if you had a fence in the backyard, there was a gate. So you could literally go from next to me, my house, my next You could literally go down the street in the backyard. Through, through the gates? There's neighbor gates. Well, now they're all just dilapidated and falling apart. They're, you could barely see them. They're all over them. But anyway, we had the woods, and we would go into these woods, and we'd have our own little area. And it was it was thickly covered. I mean, so it was like... It's one reason we played in there, because when we got hot, we could go in there and cool off in the woods. And so everybody had their little areas, like the little, they weren't forts, but, you know, you could kind of make a clearing, and this is my area, and that's brothers, and, you know, Eric's and Susan's, and brother and Diane didn't play that much. But, yeah, I forgot, I forgot all about playing in the woods. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and that the field that we played in had bamboo. So every oh, now and then there'd be, a, there'd be a bamboo spot, and, boy, you <laughs> talk about building a fort. Without having to do anything but oh, tear, out, tear out the middle of the bamboo, and you had walls and everything. Well, yeah, and then you could, you know, you could get in bamboo fights. Oh, yeah. Well, lots of bamboo fights. Yeah, or the cat, remember the cattails? Oh, yeah. And they would, You don't see cattails. I don't see cattails. I don't, yeah. I don't know why, but it seems like they were everywhere when we were kids. They were. Like horny toads and salamanders. Where'd horny toads go? I, I think I've, I've, I've actually read a couple articles that, due to the expansion in northwest and in central Oklahoma, we've driven the horny toads south to southern Oklahoma and Texas. Oh, really? Yeah, but they're still down there. But yeah, up here in Enid, I we, used to, wh- we used to find horny toads all the time and all salamanders. Time. I very, I vaguely, I hardly ever saw a salamander around my house. But we were in the creek all the time. Yeah, I mean, we literally lived yeah. in Boggy Creek chasing tadpoles. But when yeah. you're chasing tadpoles, you always you'd always run around across a salamander or. Mm-hmm you know, something weird every mm-hmm. now and then and put it in a peanut butter jar. It was always in a peanut butter jar. I don't know why. Probably had lots of peanut butter jars. Probably. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, so you'd stick the salamander in the peanut butter jar and poke holes in the top and keep <laughs> him for a day or two. And I can't remember if my, I'm sure my mom would make me let him go or I'd let him, you know, huh. I knew he was bored. So yeah, they, uh, in our back pasture, there was a low spot and right now it's a pond. But it used to be just a low spot, and there was a pond in the pasture next door at the Mackey's. And whenever it rained a lot, their pond would overflow, flow into our pasture, 
and then the water would quit and it would recede, but there would always be fish in these low spots. I could go out there with a bucket and literally just catch, you know, a dozen fish by hand, just picking them up as the water would recede and stuff. Uh, and it, it got so bad that Dad finally decided to dig a pond back there. So there's a pond back there today and haven't fished it in decades. But Yeah, we we jumped in that a time or two back in the late 70s. Yeah, once. I just I remember doing it once. I thought, okay, I'm getting in here once and I'm not doing it ever again. This is a nasty pond. It was a nasty pond, but yeah, and it's basically just a water retention pond. It was just a some place to yeah, not fed by anything. Yeah, but it never it never dries up. <clears throat> I it know. Just never dried up. No, that's kind of weird. Since the, I think we dug that in seventy seven, seventy seven, seventy eight, somewhere in there. Yeah, yeah, kind of. I remember when your dad was digging it. Yeah. Oh, dad didn't do it. Oh, he didn't? No, he we actually, that was one of the few times we ever hired somebody to do something. Had two bulldozers out there. I, I was going to say, I remember bulldozers being out yeah, there. Yeah, took them forever. Huh. Took them forever. See if you remember this. Going to the filling station mm-hmm. and your parents getting out to fill it up with ethyl. Ethyl? Ethyl. And just, the, but the smell. Oh, it, yeah. For some reason, when we were kids in the 70s, and maybe they do now too, but in the 70s, it seemed like we enjoyed the smell of gasoline. Not yeah. enough to... You know, go, sniff it. Not yeah, not enough to go to the garage and sniff it. But when you when your parent was getting a refill or getting gas, he'd be like, "Oh, I wonder if it was because it was at the quick shop and you could." A lot of times you got to go in and get penny candy. Well, but you know that's one thing. In the early seventies, it didn't seem like there was most gas stations weren't quick shops. That's true. They were just gas stations. Most of them were just gas stations, and they were everywhere. And they were everywhere, like on every freaking corner. Yeah. There was gas stations everywhere. I, I'm assuming, I mean, obviously there's not near that many now. Oh, no. No. But, just, but there's more cars, but they're more efficient. But. Yeah. Just just think, I mean, I'm just thinking of some of the corners in Enid. There was literally three gas stations on several corners. Oh, yeah. That, that, that there's not even a gas station within five blocks now. Oh, no. No. Especially Van Buren. Yeah. And uh, Van Buren and, yeah, they were like... Van Buren and Randolph was almost all gas stations. Mm-hmm. And then Van Buren and Broadway was a gas station. Yeah, they were everywhere. And then Sutton Miller's and remember that remember the Taylors uh, uh, would be down by um, they sold Christmas trees. And they had the flocked Christmas trees. Yeah, you've told me about it. I don't remember. We my, again, my mom would grab the tree at United at the uh, grocery store. Yeah. So it was across the street, north of uh, Ken's Pizza, huh? That gas station. But yeah, interesting. Yeah. yeah. But usually we went to the guy by the railroad tracks. Yeah. See, we didn't start doing that until I had kids. My, but again, I was living with a single mom, and we didn't have much money. So you know, a probably eighteen dollar tree from United was, mm-hmm. which you know they were always cool trees and. Never had any, never even thought about it, yeah. is what was funny. That's the cool thing about me growing up in the 70s and early 80s is, I guess because I, we weren't, I wasn't around like a whole bunch of rich people or country club or, so I didn't know what, I guess I didn't know. Didn't never, know what you were missing? Yeah, I didn't realize that I was missing out on anything, so yeah. I never felt like I didn't have anything. Yeah. Well, I, that's good. So, yeah. I, was, I remember it was about mid, set, mid, like 1975, brother told my mom, he said, I'm buying the Christmas tree this year. And he'd been working, he was making money, and he brought home a $75 Christmas tree. And I remember thinking, holy crap. In I the 70s, be- that's... That'd be like a $400 that'd tree today. buy half the Christmas presents. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. But he was like, and he's like, Mom, I'm buying a Christmas tree this year. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, another big one, mine, uh, 71, big snowstorm. Big, big snow. snowstorm. Now, so so thinking of that, 71, we were living on J- South Jackson behind Pizza Inn there, right off of Van Buren. Jackson's right off of Van Buren. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. there was a Pizza yeah. Inn, so yeah. behind that. And that was the last time I ever saw my dad. Mm. Was he, he had left us, and they were getting divorced, but for some weird reason, he, like— came to Enid one last time, and we were living at that house on Jackson, but then we were also living in that house. It must have been around 71. We were living in that house later, and that's when the snowstorm. Yeah. Big. We, the big snowstorm. Because I remember living on Jackson when that snowstorm hit. Yeah. It was so big, we were actually able to dig a tunnel between our house and the next neighbor's house in the backyard. And I, there's pictures of the tunnel. Of me, I mean, I'm in the tunnel. 
and I, and I couldn't remember what year it was for sure, so I texted uh, Eric McMullen. He's a guy I used to live next door, and he said, nope, that was 71. I'm like, okay. I knew it was 71 or 72. I couldn't remember. Huh. But, you know, we haven't had snow like that since. I was going to say, it, it, again, it seems like it snowed bigger and more when we were kids. Remember having snow tires? You used to have snow tires and chains or studs. You'd put studs in your back tires. Yeah. You'd go to the gas station, and they'd put studs in your tires. And you remember mud tires? Yeah. You had to have mud tires in, in the springtime. Climate change. Climate change. Yeah. And to, to me, it's all for the better. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it did. It just did seem like there was more snow back in the day. There was. A lot more. I haven't. It hadn't snowed around here forever. Oh, anyway, I didn't say forever. When we had the Hummer, it snowed. Because I remember thinking, woohoo, I got a Hummer. Yeah. It's got, been, st- got stuck. Been several years. Got stuck. Anyway. Yeah. How about. Uh, uh, at McKinley, the grade school that I went to, we had show and tell on oh, Friday, yeah. and it was like big time show and tell. I mean, people brought. Did I, I, I probably, I, I for some some reason, I'm thinking I've told this before, but so so I think this was before I started into magic, uh-huh. and I had mice. Mm-hmm. Well, you buy two mice from Woolco, <laughs> and you put them in a cage, and they're like rabbits. Then all of a sudden, there's if, like if they're male and female, yeah. Then there's like six of them, and then there's like. 18 of them. Then there's like 36 of them. So I had like this, somehow my uncle must have had, he had guinea pigs. And so he had this big, a cage that was like that long. Yeah. And it it was, it was like the shape of the thing next to the YMCA. What do you call those? Quonset hut. Yeah. It was, it was shaped like that, but it was all, the top of it was wire. It was just shaped like that. Well, it, he like maybe had two guinea pigs in it yeah. at, at some time, but he didn't have them anymore. But he gave me that cage, so I had like, I swear, I had, must have had twenty to thirty mice in that cage. <laughs> and show and tell came along. Did you take the mice? I with- took that whole. I carried that whole thing to show and tell. Now the thing is, when you're a kid, was it glass? No, it was just it was a wooden bottom, and okay. it had. And okay. then the ends were wood. With okay. a, somebody had actually, you know, you could tell it was handmade. Somebody had sawed out a door uh-huh. and had a little, the little latch. Oh, but the top of it was screen. Okay, okay. And so, um, so it it didn't weigh that much. Okay. But the thing is, when you're a kid and you're around your mice every day, you get immune to the smell. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I didn't know the mice smelled. They smell like they mice pee and poop. Yeah. Well, when you got twenty or thirty of them, yeah. So yeah. So I got. <laughs> yeah. So I got. Let's just say I got to leave school early that day to take my mice home after Ooh. show and tell. I that reminded me of the time I took. Uh, I had a, I had gerbils. I had gerbil. I had them all, and but not at the same time. So which one? See so the gerbils and hamsters. Gerbils didn't have the big tail. Right. I think so. And hamsters did have the long. Yeah, because I never could remember. Yeah. And so. I had a gerbil, and I think Kevin Cox had a hamster, and we were like, hey, I'll bring my gerbil, you bring your hamster, and we'll let them play. Uh, Gerbils and hamsters don't like each other. We put them both in the same cage. Cockfight. And and they started, there was just a ball of fur, and Holly Harper started freaking out because she goes, oh, my God, oh, my God, he bit the other one's tail off. Gosh. (laughs) I was like, no, Ollie, he didn't have a tail to begin with. I could see, I could see that. Uh, I, could, I could see her saying that. Yeah, yeah. She, she bought sardines one time. She did for yeah. show and tell. Well, she had gone or to eat. To eat, she she went to Japan for some reason. I guess they went on a trip or whatever. And when she came back, she's like, uh, you know, she brought just bought some sardines. It's like this is what they eat over there. We all like, we all tried them. We're like, Ew. did she think it was sushi or was it really it, sardines it that they sardines. ate over there? Well, they eat, you know, they eat whatever over there. Huh. They eat bats and stuff. Well, yeah. <laughs> now, did you, you never had bunk beds, did you? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Oh, you did? Okay. Oh, absolutely. Bunk, to me, bunk beds were the coolest thing ever. So I had bunk beds up until who knows what grade. Well, it's fun being on the bottom and taking your feet and pushing the... <laughs> yeah, but see, the thing is, me, I was seeing, you know, I didn't have a brother. Yeah. So... So when I so what I would do was make you know the bottom bunk was a, always a fort. There was always oh. blankets. Oh yeah, and things. Yeah. So it was like always a fort in there. And then Staten had bunk beds for quite a while, and and same thing. So that was that was one of the cool things about uh, being young in the set. And I don't, I guess, I don't know how popular bunk beds are anymore. If lots of kids, um, a little bit, and they, you know the the metal ones. It's like a 
full size on the bottom and a twin size oh, on top. Yeah. So they're they're still kind of doing those, but not so much. Yeah, not as cool as yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that was that was a good one of my favorite memories. It's been lots of time. I think I always there was so you know your your parent. You'd have to go to bed like at eight for on a school night. Yeah. And of course, when you're a kid, you're not tired at eight o'clock on a school night. So I'd always turn my bed into a uh, a uh, a uh, wa- uh, horse and wagon, yeah, wa- a covered wagon. So because I watched um, the Texas Rangers. Oh. What was that uh, Laredo? What was the name of that show? Oh, there was a Laredo. Laredo. I think it was Laredo. Anyway, we were big into playing cowboys and Indians all oh, the yeah. time. And so yeah. at night I would just continue on and I would pretend it was a covered wagon and you'd climb up and the Indians would be anyway. I just, I remember playing for like an hour or two and you know, then it'd be dark and then you'd be like, okay, I guess I better go to bed. <laughs> so, um, 1973. I remember that was the year we went on our first family vacation, went to Louisiana Louisiana. Yeah, I'm like, why are we going to Louisiana? I remember my, I distinctly remember I was in my bedroom, you know, the, the room that I had, mm-hmm. and mom came in and she says, hey, she's, we're going to go see, we had friends that lived here in town. They got transferred. They both, the parents both worked at, uh, back then it was Southwestern Bell before they, you know, split up yep. the, the mall bell. And um, so we're going to go see um, Bill and Carol, you know, Bill and Bill and Karen, Bill and Karen Slagle, Bill. Anyway, uh, so we took my brother's VW van and headed off to Louisiana, uh, Shreveport, Shreveport, mm. Louisiana. And oh my God, it was humid down there. Oh, I bet. But luckily, there was a community pool not far from their house, and we spent a lot of time in the pool. And then we all went up to Mino, Arkansas, to go camping. First time I'd ever been camping. Mino, Arkansas. I've never yeah. even heard of it. Yeah, it's uh it's it's a it, and there's a river there and uh we all camped out. Um I think I slept in the van, I think. But man, that was the first time I ever went real, real, real camping. Yeah, see that's interesting because my mom being single, having to work basically two jobs all the time, um we never went on vacation. Yeah. I mean, so I didn't start going on vacation until I started saying out, hanging out with Staten. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, so I never, so until I met Staten, even after Staten, I'd never been to the lake. Mm. I think, but then I think Richard, my uncle had come back and he had a jet ski, but that was after I'd met Staten. He'd take us to the, so anyway, yeah, so we never, we, I don't really remember ever going on a vacation yeah. other than leaving my mom leaving my dad and moving back to Enid <laughs> and then it, that was kind of like a permanent vacation. Mm, yeah. So, but, uh, so anyway, but then hanging out with Staten every year we'd go to six flags. Mm-hmm. So either we were going to six flags in Dallas because of church, or we were going to six flags over mid America in St. Louis cause they had relatives and we would go visit those relatives every year. And so, yeah, so that was a big part of my growing up in the seventies was, I never been to that six flags. Is it, which one's better? You know, it's been way so. They were both pretty. They had the Screaming Eagle at the one in St. Louis, the, the roller coaster. It was like one of the, you know, at the time, probably the biggest in the country when it was first built. Yeah. But pretty much kind of the same. I mean, size wise and ride wise, just different names. So did it have the six different countries in there like they do at six? Yeah. Them? Yeah. I think the same it, countries? Yeah. Yeah, because I remember that I used to get those maps, those cartoon maps, uh-huh. and they were, it was kind of the same. Oh. I'm surprised I haven't run across one of those somewhere in a yeah. box. Oh, I'm sure you got it somewhere. I'm sure I got it somewhere. Uh-huh. But yeah, so anyway, so yeah, uh, lots of uh, roller coaster riding. And that was cool because Marvin would take us, Yeah, and Marvin didn't like to ride. He liked to read. <laughs> so he would take a paperback book and find somewhere to sit, and he would smoke cigarettes and read a book, and me and Staten would go run off for hours. Yeah. <laughs> and we'd ride every, I mean, as much as we could, you know. So I didn't realize he liked to read. Oh, yeah. Oh, Marvin read all the time. I'll be darned. Paperbacks. Um, Louis, L- Louis Lemur. Louis Lemur. Yeah, oh, lots. It'd be Western Jack. Yeah, lots of Westerns. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He was always reading paperbacks. He cracked me up. Yeah. Uh, so. Remember the big flood in 73? Yeah. Yeah, I think we've talked about that. We have. We have. Uh, but yeah, but it was big. I mean, it was, I think, to 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 date, um, the record hasn't been broken. And right. I, I, we don't have, I don't have the stats in front of me, but the amount of water 
that came down in like a two hour period broke tons of records across the country, but I think we've still got the record for Oklahoma for yeah. the most yeah. amount of water. Yeah, and they've improved the drainage system since then. Yeah, if you drive around Enid now, you see these huge ditches, and you're like, you you think that there it's a river, you know, <laughs> which I guess it kind of is, but the river, the ditch wasn't caused by the river. The 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 river used to be a creek, and then mm-hmm. but they dug it out because yeah, because Enid got hammered and they you know that was a hundred year flood although yeah. there was a flood in 57 yeah that was pretty bad um so anyway yeah yeah and yeah. i like i said we've talked about that before i remember i mean i distinctly remember living across renting the house across the street from grandma's house great grandma and going down to her basement and bailing water you know take a pail of water and run upstairs and throw it in the driveway and of course it would run down the driveway and go back <laughs> What do we know? Give you something to do. He gave us something to do. Keep you busy. She 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 thought it was helping anyway. <laughs> so uh, yeah, and that I mean it was a it was a bad flood. Like how many I can't even remember how many people died, but it was one where people died. Yeah, like they drowned and yeah, people were literally literally on their in Brookside yeah. on their roofs and people that had boats <laughs> got in their boats and were rescuing people off of their roofs and we're not. We're in Enid, Oklahoma, people. The flat part of Oklahoma, we don't have a lake. Nope. And we don't have a river. Nope. It it, it was just that much rain in one spot that it just... And and that was what I tell people. You know, sometimes you see these floods, and, and when you see... When the plane flies over, you can see the flood. You know, you can see where the river was, and then like so many yards from the river on each side, it's flooded. Mm -hmm. No, Enid was basically the entire town was the same amount underwater. It just, it just dropped on the town and you couldn't walk across the street without it being almost, it was over your ankle deep everywhere in town. Yeah. So it was, was, I I remember distinctly asking my dad, Hey dad, are we going to be okay? And you know, my house is on the top of the hill right there. I mean, hill, our street's got a little, peak oh, yeah, it. and yeah. we were on the peak and i was like man i'm glad we're up here because he said nah, i won't get up here it never, it never never did get uh to our house yeah i did i you know and we lived in houses that were up on uh, you know there was like crawl spaces Stem under our house yeah. yeah and so and then you know you'd walk up stair at least three or four stairs just to get to the front porch so we didn't have any worries of yeah. and we didn't have a basement in our house but grandma had one in her so but yeah Big old flood. Big old flood of 73. October, and it was October, too. It was October. It was like, usually you would think it'd be like springtime rain or something. But yeah. No. No. How about a rainy day? Here, one thing that I liked to do in the summers, especially, and it's funny, because in that same house there on Johnson, because it had, so basically, a lot of the houses in Oklahoma or in Enid have porches. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and my grandma's house on 1009 West Randolph had a kind of a wraparound porch mm-hmm. with a swing on it. Used to love to play on that porch and on that swing. But the cool thing was that I like to do is if it, it would be like in the summertime, so you weren't, you didn't have to go to school. Mom would be at work and there'd be a rainstorm. And sometimes we'd get rain where it would stay gray and cloudy all day long and rain off and on all day long was to find a big cardboard box and build a fort on the front porch and kind of hang out in the box. And that must be where my love of boxes came from that led to all those cardboard mazes. mazes. Ah, yes. Oh, ah, yeah. yeah. That, that's a memory in itself. But I know we, we've done a whole episode, I think, on the mazes. I don't think we did. You don't think? Don't yeah. Think. Seems like, didn't we have Staten call in and... We'll have, to, we'll have to look that up. But I know I know we've talked about it before. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it was a big deal. It's a yeah. big deal. And then roofs. Uh, funny, we we uh, we were leaving our housing addition the other day. I swear I've never seen so many kids on bikes. I must have seen 15 kids on bikes today. Cool. Four, and then four, and then two, and then two. I mean, in packs of four. You're up to 12. <laughs> which I've never... I mean, I just never... Yeah, this virus is really, I don't know. You mean like we used to do? Yeah, like we used to do. Yeah. I mean, they're like, like coming here, there was four downtown oh, on yeah. their bikes. And I'm like, wow, I'd have, I don't remember the last time I saw four kids on bikes in downtown Enid riding around. Yeah. So anyway, um, what was my point on that? I was going somewhere. Oh, so we were coming out of Woodlands, their addition, 
And across the street, you can see the back of the houses in Nicholas Oaks. Right. And there's these two kids up on the roof. And it just sent me right back to... Those are steep roofs. Yeah. Well, the, their house is not one of them that has the really steep roof. Oh, okay. Um, but it sent me right back to all the time we spent on roofs. And I said, you know how to go tell them about what you can do with a Frisbee on a roof? You know, you sit on the Frisbee oh. in the valley and slide down and just make sure you stop before you go off the edge. Remember jumping off roofs? Yeah, and I, that that's on my list, too. I remember we used to climb on roofs, and you'd find the lowest. Yeah. And you'd get dared. I dare you to jump off. and we jump right off. We'd just jump right off. I think our bones were... S- we were, you know, when you're when you're lighter, you only you, you only weigh eighty pounds <laughs> or true. or seventy. It's kind of like a bug, you know. Yeah. The lighter you weigh, yeah. the less chance you have of breaking. Sure. Yeah. And I think that's the only way. Because I remember landing and my ankles hurting, but I, never breaking anything. Yeah. But, oh yeah, we jumped off garage roofs and house roofs and. Yeah, and it wasn't because they were lower. Because I'm still in that same damn house. I look at that front porch. Oh yeah. I remember jumping off that front porch and thinking, I would die. I, they would, I would break. Oh hips. yeah, oh yeah, we'd yeah, oh yeah, we'd have yeah. all kinds of broken bones. <laughs> oh yeah, but I, yeah, we spent that was that kind of was one of the cooler things is if you found somebody's roof that you could hang out on for a couple hours. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Remember uh, Mike Stearman betting me twenty dollars he could throw a bundle of shingles up on the roof. I do remember that. That was in the seventies. Oh my. Yeah. Yeah. So I was, you know, I roofed for my dad and. Saying how heavy these bundles of shingles are, they're like eighty something pounds. Oh, that's not heavy. It's okay. like carrying a dead body because they're not. They're stiff. Yeah, yeah, there's you know they don't help you. They don't grab onto you. Yeah, you know, uh, and and they do bend a little. If the the if the packaging breaks, then they get oh, really floppy. floppy. Yeah, that sucks. But yeah, he's like, oh, I can throw a bundle of shingles up on the roof. I don't think he ever paid me either, Mike Stearman. You owe me twenty bucks. Yeah, yeah. Very rarely do I bet if I'm not. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, he tried and tried and tried, and every time it got a little yeah, further. Yeah, I remember. It, 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 it seemed it, like it would touch the edge. Yeah, maybe. Like, like one time it almost the first time I'm saying it. Oh, oh, oh! And it kind of cut about halfway. I slid back down. I'm like, no, you got to get up there to stay. And it got further and further away every time. Yeah. Oh, uh, Stearman. So we did. Yeah. So you you roofed for your dad through the '70s, yeah. and then towards the late '70s, I roofed um, off and on mm-hmm. a little bit with you guys. So yeah, I think everybody did. Uh, Kyle phone. did. Yeah. Yeah, I remember you guys stapled my damn hat to the roof. Do you remember that? I don't think I did that, but... Whatever. Uh, that was my favorite hat. Probably Staten. No, Staten never roofed for us. I don't oh, think. Didn't. It was, it was, Kyle. It was you Kyle. and Kyle. It was you and Kyle. <laughs> I'll never forget. You guys were you guys were assholes. Oh, the fun stuff. Oh, man. Now, have I talked about... I surely have... When we did the game... Um, Muslims? Deal talking. Well, no, the um, talking about. I had a fascination with marbles mm-hmm. when I was a kid, <clears throat> and because I would marbles to me weren't marbles. They were, you know, if I was if I was playing cowboys and Indians, you know, the red ones were cowboys and the blue ones were Indians. You know, I, I could turn marbles into. Why well, weren't the red ones Indians? Well, I'm just saying. I whatever. Co- oh. I'm just. I was just grabbing. Okay. Some of them were not even color. Some of them were the. If they had different designs on them, then they were like the train robbers or oh. but you know but i would roll them you know like in groups of five or six and pretend like they were guys on horses <laughs> but then i got into you know we had hot rod tracks so every you know hot wheels hot wheels yeah so i had the hot wheels track but then i also had the some big black track that something there must have been a car where you could wind up and it would zip because there was not there wasn't slots in it but it had a real high bank anyway and I'm I, I'm pretty sure I've talked about this before, but I build I would build really long um, roller coasters mm-hmm. with m- the Hot Wheels track and mm-hmm. zip marbles down them. Yeah, instead of cars. Instead of cars. Yeah, because yeah, cars would never cars always fizzled out after the. Yeah. If they la- if they even made it through the loop, right. marbles always made it through the loop. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, if your kids, if you ever want to do something fun for or with your kids, but now I think they actually sell them. I, I literally think they sell kits that make those roller coasters and you roll marbles down them. Now, why didn't it? Why? Yeah. I should have just. Oh, there's all kinds of TikTok videos like that. should just package it and. Where they, where they go through the house and try to make things fall over. Yeah. And that's what I. Yeah. Yeah. We do that all the time. What was that guy's name that did. Uh, there's a there's a like a doctor or a scientist. Do they name that after the? Yeah, I don't know. And that's funny because when Goonie and we'd been doing that for years before Goonies ever came out. You uh-huh. know, they would 
to get the gate open. Yeah. But yeah. Like yeah. Mousetrap, game Mousetrap. Mousetrap, yeah. I never played that game. I just put it together and did it. I th- yeah, I don't remember ever really playing it either. <laughs> I don't know yeah. how to play them. Out. It's kind of like uh, um, what was the one where you did the surgery? Um, oh, fa- uh, 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 operation. Operate. Yeah, I yeah. don't know that we ever really played Operation. It would everybody just tried to see if they yeah. could get the thing out without buzzing. <laughs> oh, yeah. I can hear that noise now. God, it would just drive me crazy. Drive me crazy. How are we doing on time over there? Uh, oh, I got time over here too. Yeah. Yeah. We got we got yeah. a little more time. Yeah, we're doing good. Um, coming out of the mid seventies, uh, that's when we started watching movies. You started know? watching movies. Yeah. Girls, we noticed girls had boobies yeah. and Jaws came out. Jaws. Oh yeah, that's when we started going literally going to the movie every Friday night. The so video. so we'd go to the Video Twin. Yeah, we'd see a movie. Then we would cross the street to. Pizza Inn, yeah, and meet girls there. We never. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like we ever met them at the movie. All right. It's like we'd meet them at Pizza Inn. Yeah, I still got that scar right there from uh, Shelly. Shelly Campbell. Shelly Breckenridge. Breckenridge. She's Campbell now. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I tried to get you know the what? last That's, pizza. Pizza. I can almost smell. I can literally right now almost smell that smell in Pizza Inn. <laughs> yeah. It had oh, a, yeah. and it wasn't really a. It was a pizza smell, but it just, it it had its own. Yeah, you don't walk into a pizza parlor now and and get that smell. Yeah, because you really don't walk into pizza parlors anymore. Yeah, so. it was kind of, and it was it was literally a parlor. Yeah, you sat down and ate pizza. Yeah, and it but it was kind of dark and it was cool boo, it had, with booths and, and it had the red and white checkered tablecloth. Yeah, and then did it have? I don't know if it had a candle or a little flicker light or it. I don't know. Uh, I just kind of remember. Yeah, but I can almost smell smell pizza in. Mm-hmm. And then I, and then the the arcade opened up, which was just half a block away. Yeah. The Electric Eagle. No, I wasn't Electric Eagle. It was uh, Overland Trail. Overland Trail. Overland Trail Arcade. Yeah. Many, many, many quarters in there. Not you, me. Yes. You take your one quarter in there and play asteroids all freaking night long. (laughs) Yeah. Now, what about pawn shops? Oh, stars. uh, That's all right. That's why I'm so, so. So there was one area in Enid on East West Main that had a row of pawn shops. Yeah. And we would sneak down. I don't I say sneak. Our parents never ask us where we were going. No. We just hop on our bikes and go. go. And I'm sure if they knew we were going to the pawn shop, they would not have wanted us to. But so we'd go to the pawn shops and I was always going in looking for comic books. You guys were always getting stars, uh-huh. Chinese stars, throwing stars. <laughs> throwing stars. Yeah. So if you guys don't know what we're talking about, it's those metal Stars, stars that you see in the ninja Bruce, movies yeah. ninja movies where they ah! <laughs> throw them and it <laughs> we stuck kill, them in, kills people <laughs> yeah we just threw them at the fence yes we did yeah they had so you had the cool the black ones that were ornate yeah like you didn't throw those so much but then you had the, like the utilitarian they were silver yeah just uh, yeah, yeah cheapo star I wonder where those went I'm sure you have them in a box somewhere. Uh, you would think, but no, I don't know. Well, where where would we get rid of them at? I don't know. I mean, they didn't like wear out. They'd get, they'd get dull, but you could. Yeah, I don't know where our stars went. Huh? I'm gonna have to get online so I can find some. Oh, I'm sure they're everywhere. Uh huh. Um, hours and hours of recording on the cassette recorder. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I still have a lot of those tapes. Mm-hmm. We may have to do a whole episode where I do nothing but play those tapes. We shall. You should because I mean, but I mean, they're like <laughs> adolescent. I mean, they're like uh, you wouldn't. Yeah. Our listeners love to hear us forty years ago it, it, or forty five years ago. Some of them are pretty hilarious. We'll have to go through them and and take out pick out the best clips. Yeah, the boogie check ones and oh yeah, oh yeah. There's be- lots of fart ones. I, I, <laughs> I know that. <laughs> Well, yeah, man. And yeah. then I've got lots of uh, uh, Dr. Demento where, you know, you uh, almost every Dr. Demento song, the first three seconds is missing because right. <laughs> because I didn't know what song was coming up. And then as soon as I heard it, I would hit record. Hit record and so you always miss the very, very beginning of the song. <laughs> uh, uh, those were a good time. Went to my first concert in 76. I talked about that before. Kiss. Yeah, went to the Kiss concert. Uh, Mark Smallman, Mark Mankin, Mark and Rob, uh, the Mankin boys, they got to invite somebody. Mark invited me. Rob invited Buzz. And that was when Kiss was big. So, yeah, well, they had just started. I mean, they started in 73, so they were, yeah. 
Yeah, they were, they were big. Yeah, it was at the Lloyd Noble Center. I'll never forget it was the first concert I ever went to, and I was like, "What?" The? I was like, it's, "It was sensory overload." Oh yeah, with those guys, and you know, and I couldn't believe his parents took us. But it was fun because we went down uh, in Oklahoma City the day before and stayed at the Holodome. Oh really? Yeah. So the Holodome was a Holiday Inn with an indoor swimming pool. Yeah. Whoa! Ooh. Indoor swimming pool. Like what? Wait, what? There's such a thing. Oh yeah, yeah. We we uh, we were treated well, and the next day we got up and go to the concert, and yeah, it was pretty. Yeah, my ears were ringing, and wow, I was, I was, I think I was just as, uh, what's the word, um, um, amazed at the crowd oh. <clears throat> than I was the you know the the show. You know, because there's all this smoke. What's all this smoke doing? And back then, you got to throw balls around and, mm-hmm. and frisbees around. Mm-hmm. That was fun. Throwing and past joints. And past joints. Yeah. Ear. Yeah. Ear. <laughs> Ear. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, and what was the thing? Uh, don't uh, don't get the, the, the cigarette wet. What do they call don't, it? Don't. Um, uh, Bogart. Don't Bogart? Yeah, no. Yeah. Don't. I can't yeah, remember what it's called. I can't either. There was a word for it. Yeah, I, I, I never smoked it, so I, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that was yeah. yeah. That was the that was in seventy six, seventy seven. Your Elvis allegedly died. Yeah, that was, that was a big thing. Told that story many a time. Yeah, I I, I literally remember the minute I found out. Mm-hmm. Yep, I was sitting laying on the couch. Yeah, watching TV. Breaking news! Breaking news! I'm like, oh, what the heck? What's breaking now? Yeah, that was bad. Bad day. Bad day. Bad yeah, but you know, at that point, Elvis wasn't. We just, I, I don't. We didn't think much of him, you know, because he he was pretty heavy. And yeah, he was. He was. He could have made a comeback. I mean, he was still touring and stuff. Oh yeah, he, he could have. Yeah, he had a lot. Of, I mean, he was only forty two. He had a lot of life left. Yeah, he could have. He could have got his crap together. Uh, what else? What else? Uh, just the sounds of the locusts. I want, so you oh. guys let us know, um, buzz at buzzheadmedia.com every summer. And I think I just read, so I think, I think the locusts come really heavy every seven years. Oh yeah. And so one of, you know, of course there was a couple of them probably in the seventies, but I remember there being some summers where they were just so, I mean, literally so loud. Mm-hmm. If you were outside, you couldn't almost hear each other talk. Yeah. And actually there's not locusts, they're cicadas. Or Katie did. Or, or Katie did. Because um, locust is uh, not a – locust is a term for a bunch of insects together, right? I don't – yeah, I don't yeah. know. But I think I think I just read an article that this summer is one of their – is one of their seven years. So they yeah. may be loud again. Yeah, they did. Yeah. As soon as it got hot. When you heard them, you knew, oh, hell, it's going to get oh, hot. Yeah. It's time, oh, to, yeah. time to get hot. Oh, it's it was, time to go put Curtis's water cooler in the window. That's right. <laughs> put the old water cooler in and go out there and water it every uh, two or three hours. And Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Uh, on a, a little bit of a downer note, uh, 78, big, big, big year for me. Brother died. Yeah. Uh, that was probably the biggest of the 70s. That's probably the biggest thing. And that was when you really popped up on our radar. I mean, I know we played a lot of um, dodgeball yeah. and burnout and Foursquare there in the morning, and knew you, and and um, Jeremiah, Jer- the dog, yeah, yeah, brother's yeah, dog, yeah, yeah. Your dog would come down uh, to the to junior high, and um, but then uh, yeah, after your brother died, it's like where's Todd? <laughs> oh, his brother died. Yeah, he's not coming yeah. to school for a couple of days or yeah, and like it's weird. Like, ooh, that's yeah. like weird. Yeah, he died on Mother's Day, May 14th, 1978. And up until that time, I didn't know anybody had died. I never knew, no one ever died in my family. I didn't know anybody else's family who had somebody I was going to say, yeah, I don't know that I knew anybody who had a relative that had died until yeah. I then. Because mean, your, was your great-grandmother still around? Yep. She was still around, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because yep. I remember going over there. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, everything... Everything kind of turned a little bit there, and then. Uh, and that's basically after you got back in school. Is then then from then on we all kind of started hanging out. Yeah, riding bikes and spending the night. Yeah. I don't know why I was always spending the night at Todd's house. I I don't. Mm-hmm. I don't know why it was easier to sneak out. <laughs> I guess I don't know. It just seemed like that's where we always spent the night. I don't really re- ever remember spending the night at my house. 
Mm, I don't either. I don't think you had the the the, the not room. space, but like the uh, yeah. you know, beds and yeah, the, and I'm, that's probably why. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty. It was a smaller house. It just seems like your house was the one we always. I guess, and then we'd sleep in the den sometime yeah. at later after it was built. But yeah, we just yeah, literally just walk out there. There was no sneaking out. We just <laughs> open the door and leave. Your, yeah, your but, parents were snoozing, and yeah, yeah. and who knows? They may have, uh, who knows? Parents yeah. know more than we probably thought they did. <laughs> <laughs> I'd ask them if we could, but they yeah. uh, uh seventy eight. Also, the year I bought my first car. A 1972 Caprice. I paid $750 for it. I see it in my vision right now. I actually have a, I found a picture the other day of, of the Monte Carlo parked in front of the Caprice in the front driveway. That was a big car. Yeah. I was, I, so I was taking a picture of my car, but you could see the rear end of the Monte Carlo, which uh-huh. is now in my garage. Uh, I, I looked it up. In 1972, that car, when it was made, 1972 was a $4,000 car. So f- six years later, John Pearson sold it to me for seven hundred fifty bucks, and he let me make payments. I'll never forget. I would, um, as I got the money, I'd go over to his house and I would just put the money on his dresser. Huh. You know, because back then we didn't lock doors. Oh yeah. I still don't lock doors. You can come in my house and get whatever you want. But uh, yeah, yeah. Left him. I think it was. I think I paid him seventy five dollars. I don't know if it was a month or a week or something like that, but yeah, that's funny because about that time is when I bought my guitar, and I would, and it was on layaway at the uh, guitar store. The Jensen's? No, it was called the guitar store. It was down. It was uh, on West Broadway, where Baker Harris Insurance is right now. Oh, I forgot all about that. But yeah, there was a music store. Yeah, there. was it called the guitar? Uh-huh. I think it was called something like the guitar shop or the guitar store wow i don't i don't, me- I don't remember the name yeah that's where i bought my black les paul copy and oh. he basically would let me come down and play it and look at it and i'd give him like 50, 25 or 50 bucks and have to leave it there until i got it all paid off uh, how much was it yeah, it's probably three or four hundred dollars yeah that's a lot of money for oh yeah we were in high school and yeah. i was delivering ice so it wasn't huge paychecks but yeah Start of an ice company. Start of an ice that that yeah, but that was that was late late seventies. Yeah, but um, I always wanted to go deliver ice with you guys, but I had to work all the dang time. Oh yeah, it definitely was not work. I mean, <laughs> here we are. I mean, literally the day I got my license, so I was sixteen. It had to be a two and a half ton truck, <laughs> Ford, five speed. Left the had never driven it in my life. Left, Le- never drove the standard. Had never driven, yeah, <laughs> on the road. I mean, you know, we played around with the Dart. Oh, the Dart, yeah. But not like a the truck. Dart. Yeah, and, the and Dart. I left the, and yeah, left the parking lot. Ice parking lot, and of course, went right up the hill to the first red light, and it was, I'm on a hill, and I'm like, holy moly, what do I do? <laughs> and there was, a, and then, a, yeah, of course, a car, car pulled up, up right behind me. Yeah, yeah so. of course. But anyway, yeah, so he let us drive those big. <laughs> trucks and i mean we were all 16 17 15 a lot of us were 15 because we didn't drive we had to ride on the passenger side right um but we would drive 60 mile to town 60 miles away or further to deliver ice and i mean we rolled trucks we burned up engines we had wrecks we well you were popping wheelies in the thing we were popping wheelies <laughs> we were throwing ice bags at everything that moved along the roads we <laughs> i mean the stories you could make a movie out of the fun we had delivering ice hey, and the hey. people we mrs bean at beans at the lake at the lake yeah. at salt plains yeah oh my god the stories <laughs> <laughs> oh, some of the stories we could tell uh, i pretty much covered all my list oh you did yeah. okay um have we ever done an episode on dodgeball i mean dodgeball was a big game in the 70s yeah. at school oh, yeah. um, and the real dodgeballs not these fluffy oh things. yeah no these fluffy things you can't even throw them yeah i can't even yeah. imagine yeah um so yeah so anyway just want to bring up some of the old cool fun uh, memories of the seventies that we had. So if you guys, uh, let us know like your top memory uh, and, and if, if it was a kid, now, if you were like a young adult in college or something, um, just give us kind of your kid. If you grew up as a kid in the seventies, give us your best 
kid memory and uh, let us know. Buzz at buzzheadmedia.com or get us at 580-541-3805. Guys, leave us a review. Subscribe to the podcast. Subscribe. subscribe. Uh, just, uh, anyway, keep in touch. Tell we, all your friends and family. Yeah, we're glad you guys keep checking in. Hopefully, we are brightening your day every oh, week. Oh, man, I forgot to do TikTok again. Dadgummit. Oh, I forgot to do TikTok. I'll do it here in a minute. Okay, so we're going to get out of here. Cheerio! See ya! Mm-hmm.